Hello and welcome to another episode of Into the Issues. I'm Steve Pappas. I will be your host. Um, today, I am honored to have Eloise Reed, who is the Census Coordinator for the Community Action Councils around the state. Eloise, yes. thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Um, 2020 is the year that the census needs to be done again. It's a constitutional mandate. Mm -hmm. um, I think people uh, often take it for granted, but there's a lot riding on the census being done and yeah. done properly. Mm -hmm. And um, you've been hired, uh, mm -hmm. essentially, by the Community Action Councils to, to do what exactly? So I am working um, as a coordinator for uh, outreach and um, trainings um, to promote and encourage the populations that we serve as community action partners or councils uh, across the state. Um, and I am promoting the 2020 census. I am trying to train as many of the community action partners um, staff as possible. So. I am working, um, I'm based in the Barrie office, the Capstone Community Action um, office in, in Barrie, uh, and that's the central Vermont region. We, they serve, we serve uh, Barrie, Montpelier, up to Lamoille, and then a little bit farther south. Um, and then I'm also working with all of the four other ones, so there's the Southeastern Vermont Community Action Partner. Um, and they cover the Brattleboro region and up a little bit. And then there's uh, Brock, the Bennington, um, Rutland, Rutland. <laughs> uh, Op Opportunity Council, I believe is the Yeah, they, the they just go by Brock. Yeah, they go by Brock. You, yeah. Even on their website, you yeah. look for it, it's, they don't, <laughs> yeah. they don't um, it's exactly what it is. So they are also a community action partner. Uh, and then there's CVOEO, the Champlain Valley Opportunity um, Economic Council, mm -hmm. I believe, something like that. Yeah. They are also go by CVOEO. Uh, and that's the Burlington region. And then there's the Northeast Kingdom Community Action, NECA, an easy ac acronym that actually works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so you're working with each one of those community action councils to make sure that um, in particular, they are working with you to count that uh, the population served mm -hmm. specifically by community action, mm -hmm. and and that's more commonly known as the undercounted population yeah. or the hard to count hard population to count. is yeah. what people are calling it. So, yeah. there are complete count committees um, that are formed across the state of Vermont. There are 22 that mm -hmm. I know of so far, and we're trying to form more. Um, so we would like to have probably a few more in the central Vermont region um, because what we have one right now that's predominantly berry focused so it would be nice to maybe have two or three more meetings with other locations maybe in Montpelier, some in the Matter of Valley, some in Lamoille um, and uh, we also are trying to get com complete count committees happening in the Northeast Kingdom. Um, complete count committees are um, a grassroots organizing strategy that the Census Bureau nationally has kind of um, played out and, and rolling out over across the entire country. Um, and the community action partners, we would like them to have a strong presence on each complete count committee. Mm -hmm. Um, and we would like to, them and the ambassadors, so there's me, I train all these ambassadors, and our ambassadors are hopefully going to be on every complete count committee, kind of, yeah, as a way to represent the hard to count population, and, um, you know, that's because each CAP agency uh, works directly with um, low income populations. Um, we do, we have a lot of different programs, um, and so all of those programs directly interface with uh, a lot of the population that is, yeah, defined as hard to count. Mm -hmm. I can go into that or... Yeah. Um, hard to count. Um, our folks that are really kind of like traditionally underrepresented or um, are overlooked a lot of the time. I, I always am curious about the term hard to count because I wouldn't say all of the people in that list um, 
don't want to be counted. It's just that a lot of the time their voices are overlooked. So um, LGBTQ populations, low income populations, elderly populations, rural populations, um, the ages zero to five is another um, really undercounted group of people. So young pre-K children. Um, Let's homeless, back. transient, <clears throat> yeah, so there's a lot of people. Let's back up a second okay. and tell people why it's important yeah. to have the complete count. Okay, so historically, um, uh, people of color and um, what I, all those folks I was just mentioning, all those populations have been undercounted um, and um, People who have addresses and access to communication and are more visible, so those are like whiter, wealthier people, have actually been overcounted um, in past censuses. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so it's really important for all of the country, um, but in Vermont specifically, uh, to make sure that each person is counted because there are federal taxes that we all pay if they um, if all of that money is leaving the state of Vermont and then redistributed basically there's 675 billion dollars that um, that the 2010 census was able uh, to distribute and it has to be distributed equitably and that is based on the, the population. That's based on the demographics. That's based on the numbers in Vermont. So we want that money coming back to our state. And if it doesn't come back to our state, it's going to go somewhere else and, you know, where they maybe did a better job of counting every person. Um, so we want to make sure that every 600,000 plus Vermonters are counted and they all fill out the census in various forms. We can talk about that later. But we want them to fill out the census so all of that federal tax money that you're already paying is coming back to our state for things like roads, road maintenance, hospitals, rural hospitals, schools, um, food stamp programs, Medicaid, uh, school lunch um, and school breakfast programs, um, Head Start, the pre-K, free pre-K uh, programs for Vermonters. So a lot of really important programs um, depend on getting an accurate number of um, people counted, and so, then that dollar amount comes with it. So the bottom line is we don't want to risk leaving money on the table. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because we don't want that money to go somewhere else. And, and it's my understanding that for every person who isn't counted, it's a few thousand dollars yeah, it's, that is left behind. Mm -hmm. It's $2,830. Per person, per year. Per year. So twenty-eight thousand dollars that goes unclaimed. Over so, the course of the decade mm -hmm, until the next. Until census. twenty thirty, exactly. Right. And there's, I actually have like, there's, yeah. So two point five billion that comes back to Vermont um, in f in fifty five large federal spending programs. Mm -hmm. um, so the community action partners, we we get a lot of funding from the um, community services block grant. Um, and that's a huge chunk of that um, uh, projected money. And I think in 2010, actually, we were undercounted. So that 2.5 billion could have been more if we had uh, an accurate count. 80% mm -hmm. of Vermonters, 81% of Vermonters responded to the 2010 census. And what we would like is for that to be increased to an 83%, so by 2%. Mm -hmm. was what we're hoping for for the 2020 census. And the timeline here is, it's a crunch. Yeah. I mean, let's talk a little bit about that because it's, yeah. it is coming right up. It is coming right up. Um, in some ways, you know, with our kind of like fast-paced world, it does help to kind of get all this information right now before you actually receive the census information in the, um, in the mail because there are, you know, it's been rolling out slowly, but right now we are kind of in that exciting time to be able to promote the awareness for people to n know what the census is and to um, find out all about it and find out the different ways that they can um, take the census. But 
So um, the way that I have been thinking about it is all of February until March 12th is like the awareness, um, the times that we're sharing on all social media platforms, we're doing radio bits, the um, statewide complete count committee, which has um, some partnerships with UVM and the state librarians um, organization. Uh, they have some money to do some promotion materials with um, Vermont Broadcasting Association. So there's going to be some local um, radio ads with some trusted voices of the community, which will be cool to hear. Um, so hopefully those will start rolling out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but so up until March 12th is kind of this big awareness push. And then uh, if you have an address, you will get... Um, a little mailer in your um, mailbox and it's going to have the three ways that you can respond um, before someone knocks on your door. So the first way is this paper traditional fill out a paper form and mail it back. Um, that's the first way. The second way is you can call and you can do it on the phone. So that's exciting. That's a way to kind of open up um, access to a lot more people and mm -hmm. there are 12 different languages that you can call and someone a live person will answer the phone in that language and I believe all those numbers will be listed mm -hmm. um, uh, on the mailing um, and then the last way is to do it online so you can go if you have internet access if you have a computer um, or even if you have a library where you use a computer or the internet, um, there are ways to enter the website and you'll be able to fill out the census online. Um, and to be clear, mm -hmm. you have to fill out the census. You can't, you can't, you can have, you can go and have somebody assist you. Yeah. But you, you can't let somebody else fill yes. out the information for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are some. Right. There are Obviously, some. like some exceptions, if you um, can't read or can't write, um, there are going to be ways for people to help you fill it out. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, yeah, the information that you're providing is what you're saying at least, um, and hopefully what you're writing or entering in or saying on the phone at most. Yeah, you do have to do it yourself. Um, we don't want, you know, you, they do, you, know, you don't want... Um, inaccurate information and you definitely don't want people to feel like they don't have a voice when they're filling out the census um, right. so yeah there are ways that people can assist you um, and your kids aren't going to get a form it's 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 right. by address exactly yeah. it's so it's um, this is important it's every resident in the US it's not every citizen it's every resident you do not have to be a citizen of the US to fill it out and in fact, that is, you know, a group, another group that I didn't mention earlier, um, undocumented people, immigrants, um, people who don't have citizenship, um, is, has been, um, has probably gotten the most kind of media attention in the past year uh, regarding the question around citizenship, the mm -hmm. Trump administration trying to um, enforce the Census Bureau to add a citizenship question on um, the census and that was not successful there is no citizenship question on the census um, so what that means is that if you are not a citizen you can still fill out the census and in fact you should still fill out the census because a lot of those programs that I mentioned earlier section 8 housing I did not mention earlier but SNAP, Medicaid, those programs are available and um, should be taken advantage of by people who um, need them the most. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, you know, a large number of undocumented people and then even new Americans. In Vermont, we have a really large population of new Americans who may not speak um, English or, or maybe even one of those 12 languages that's um, on the phone, but there are 59 languages that you can take it online, mm -hmm. which is cool. So, like the Burlington Winooski area, um, and they're they're hiring translators as well, which mm -hmm. is also exciting. So, if you are from um, uh, a group of people that speaks a different language other than English, and you can speak both languages, and you want to translate, 
um, you get paid for your time and, and help. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. So there's plenty of opportunities for people to take the census. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you all are trying to make sure that people are aware that it's coming, aware of the timeline. Um, some people yeah. get a little freaked out because they think that the, 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 the census means I have to fill out all this. It's going to be this big, long form, yeah. and I have to give all this personal information. That's not true. No, that's not true. <clears throat> there are nine questions on the census. Um, and again, if you have access to the internet or um, can get online somehow, you can see an informational copy of the census beforehand. So if you know you have that misconception of, oh, it's going to take forever, it's going to take an hour, I have to fill out all these different like questions and I don't know, I don't want to, I don't have time. A lot of people don't have, say they don't have time. It takes maybe 10 minutes. Um, it could take even like four minutes. If you are a single person in your house and you have one um, section to answer, you do your name, um, you do your address, uh, you do your ethnicity, your race, your sex, your gender, your date of birth and um, how you own the home you live in so, or, or rent. So mm -hmm. how the home is kind of like how you are occupying the home. Um, and all that information is very confidential. Um, I believe there's like jail time and a fine if someone is somehow associated with sharing that information. So the um, security is a really big question too. Like will my landlord find out if if I say there are eight people living here and just two people on the lease, no, they won't. Um, that's another, you know, group of people that traditionally would maybe say, I'm just going to throw this away and, like, I don't want anyone coming to my door and, like, just get it out of my face. I don't want my information shared with anybody. But, um, no, it takes, it really does, it shouldn't take very long. And, you know, there are all these ways that um, it can be more accessible to you. Um, another thing is that most of the community action partnerships, hopefully by the time um, the, the census is available to take, will have um, locations that they can go to. So the, I know the Capstone and Barry, um, we serve a lot of people um, who come to the food shelf or who are, right now we have a lot of the VITA program, the tax system. Yeah, taxi, tax um, help and assistance. Um, so there are ways, you know, that we're trying to meet people where they're at. So if they're coming already to Capstone or to any other community agent, uh, community action partnership, um, we're trying to have census days where we'll have a phone available for people and we'll hopefully have some volunteers um, to help with the phone or help um, to take it on online mm -hmm. uh, on the laptop. So um, hopefully that's going to be happening across the state at all the community action partners and definitely at all the libraries. Mm -hmm. I don't have a super close contact with the libraries right now, but I know that, um, like I said, the statewide complete count committee is working closely with the libraries so um, to, to basically offer the same mm -hmm. type of service so it's, it's cool if you you know if you don't have a way to do it um, from your home there are ways for you to do it in a public more public setting that provides services mm -hmm. now you did say before somebody comes to your door I know that is a that's our market that's our technique yes yeah if you do not want someone to come to your door, if you don't want the government knocking on your door, there are ways to ensure that that won't happen. You just call. It takes 10 minutes, 15 minutes, um, or you do it online. And um, as I was saying earlier, there are way you know there are many places online that you're already kind of giving out a lot more information than the census even asks for. Hmm. Um, the census is non-invasive. That's like the way that, you know, people, we want to push that. Um, they don't ask for um, a social security number. They don't ask for um, anything about your income, um, yeah, your citizenship. Um, yeah, they just ask, like, how many people are in this house, mm -hmm. and who are they? Mm -hmm. It's just a count, you know? It's like the information gets taken, and then we get to use it for the, the reports and for the 
accurate um, number of uh, and, um, amounts of funds that we can actually you know, get if we actually have the right amount of people counted. So if you want to avoid having somebody come to your house, yeah. you can do all these other things. But if you don't and you have an address, somebody's going to come to your house. Yeah. And they're going to knock on the door. Yeah, that and happens. The, yeah. And they're going to ask. And, um, mm -hmm. and it's also worth noting that you can be a census volunteer. You can be a census taker. Taker and be paid for you can, it. Yeah, you're not volunteering. Right. You're getting paid right. $20 an hour. Yeah. So. And, and how do you do that? How do you sign up to do that? 2020census.gov. Mm -hmm. And um, you can, you know, remember that or we can link it somewhere. Um, and you fill out um, a form. <laughs> and I think it takes basically like just, just a few minutes. Um, oh, yeah. So here's the nice. We can be census takers. Um, uh, but, oh, yeah, so they are really looking for people who, if you have maybe a full-time job and you need a few more hours, you can do you can do it part-time, you can do it full-time. Um, and uh, retirees are a great group of people who would like if they want to go door-to-door. -door. And um, another thing I just learned from a census recruiter was um, is that they are not going to make you go somewhere that you are not familiar with or work really far away, drive really long distances to do your job, they'll put you in your community. Mm -hmm. So that might be also nice because that is another way for a trusted voice to say, hey, I'm your neighbor, I live right down the street, or I live a few blocks away, um, let me, you know, let's fill this out so we can, I'm not sure if they can kind of do the same sort of like push, they just have to, you know, ask for the information. Right. But it's, yeah, it's a really good job. Twenty dollars an hour. That's a great. Um, that's a great rate, honestly. Um, and um, yeah, I think. And they do a training, and they do they they make you feel comfortable. So you're you're when you take it. Um, they're yeah. I think it's like I think the people are really looking for. This is a big push. Where we need more census takers in Vermont. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So, again, the timeline is such that the census starts when? March 12th. Okay, so March 12th to May 15th, um, you can fill out the census and send it in. Um, April 1st is designated Census Day. What that means is that that's the date that they ask all of the information to be recorded on the census. So on April 1st, how many people were living in your house? On April 1st, et cetera, et cetera. Like that's the main day that they're pushing. Um, and then people will start knocking on your doors um, in May. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't filled it out online, on the phone, or by mail, um, look for census enumerators to come and uh, knock on your door and that's yeah that's how that that will probably happen that yep. will most likely happen um it's required by you know it's in the constitution to fill it out and and, and when does it officially end Jul like july 31st mm -hmm. so oh another interesting thing is that this year with all this great like data gis mapping um you're going to be able to see in real time the number of people that have filled it out and have been kind of processed through the census um, who was ever receiving the data. Um, and then that will help the census takers know where to target and know, okay, this person hasn't filled it out, let's go make sure that we knock on this door. Or this block is traditionally undercounted, um, let's make sure that we are knocking on those doors um, in, in May. So, um, and we'll be able to see that data coming back, which is kind of exciting. Yeah, that's you can, very You can cool. see a map of it. Yeah. Well, Eloise, we're actually out of time. Oh my gosh. So I told you it goes <laughs> fast. It goes so, fast. So Eloise Reed, who yeah. is the census coordinator for the community action, um, partnerships around the state. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah. And, um, 
keep watching because there's a short video um, that the census has put together that we are tacking on to the end of this program that gives you a lot of the same information that you just heard, um, but we'll probably give you a little bit more. And don't forget to do your census yeah. in 2020. Take the so, census. And thank you, and stay tuned until next time. What is the 2020 census? Every 10 years, the census records everyone living in this country. It's written in the Constitution and comes in a questionnaire that counts everyone who lives at your address on April 1st. The data can be used to inform funding for services like fire stations, schools, clinics, and representation that affect your community. How will 2020 census data be used? Where there are more people, there are more needs for public services. That's why the census is used by the government to inform funding decisions each year. But that's not all. It's also used by nonprofits to inform services, by businesses to create jobs, and even by students for school projects. Understanding how the population changes helps us shape communities across the country for the better. How does the 2020 census affect representation? There are 435 seats in the House of Representatives. These get distributed to the 50 states by population, and an accurate census response helps your state get the right amount of seats. States with smaller populations get at least one, while states with larger populations might get more. How do I take the 2020 census? In March 2020, every address in the country will receive an invitation to complete a simple questionnaire. And there are three ways to respond. Number one, do it online. Number two, call by phone. Number three, send it by mail. For those who don't respond, a census taker from your community will follow up and assist you. Is my 2020 census data safe? After sending your census response, your personal information is kept safe. By law, it can't be shared with any other government agency, law enforcement, or landlord. No one. So take your 2020 census with peace of mind. Shape your future. Start here. Visit 2020census.gov.